Hello there. In this video, I'm going to guide you on how you can use Asterisk as a Teams compatible SBC for use with direct routing. Asterisk does not work with Teams direct routing by default because the zip packages that Asterisk sends uh, contain an IP address where Microsoft would like to see a host name. We're going to walk through setting up a server, downloading, modifying, and installing Asterisk, and then adding our SBC to the Microsoft 365 tenant so we can make phone calls. If you want to follow along, I suggest you check out the description for a link to my blog post with written instructions. What you will need is a server to run asterisk on, a domain name, an account with a VoIP provider with a phone number, and a free Microsoft 365 developer tenant if you don't already have one. This is a segmented video, so if you want to skip a step, you can check out the description for timestamps. Keep in mind that this isn't a production-ready setup and stuff might break. It's fun to play around with though, and it's a great way to gain more knowledge about voice over IP. All right, that's enough talking, let's get started. I'm using DigitalOcean as my VPS provider. Uh, if you don't have an account yet with them, you can check out the link in the description for a $100 credit. Um, I'm going to pick Ubuntu and the $40 option because that will speed up the video, but the $5 option is fine. Uh, for the location, I'm going to go with Amsterdam. I'm going to select IPv6 and a SSH key. I'm going to leave the hostname default and then create the droplet. Okay, so now the droplet has been created. And we can go ahead and create the domain name. Direct it to the new droplet. Okay, there we go. And now we're going to copy that domain name and I'm going to open my terminal and then SSH into the new server as root, because why not? And I don't have my hardware key plugged in. All right, here we go. We finally got in, and now we have a brand new DigitalOcean droplet. Uh, I'm going to now download asterisk from asterisk.org, because like I said in the intro, we need to make a small modification to asterisk so let's download it. And we can just use the um, packaged form that comes with your distro. Okay, now let's extract this tarball. And then come in and go ahead and install all the dependencies we need. Luckily there's a script for that. That's in contrib scripts. And then install prereq. And then give that the install command and let it do its thing. All right, and as you can see, all the dependencies are successfully installed. So we can now move on to the next step. And that will be um, actually making the source code modification. So the file we want to edit is in the res folder. Uh, and it's called res underscore pjzip underscore net dot c. And we want to look for uh, a uh, statement uh, that has to do with the external signaling address. Here we go. And come down a little bit here. And we want to edit this line, the one that starts with uh, pj underscore strdup2. And we want to edit the uh, third parameter here. So make sure you leave the last parentheses, the closing parentheses, and then uh, here you enter the string that contains the host name of your SPC. So for us, that's going to be team-spc.do.ox5e.eu. All right, and we need to make this uh, uh, change a second time as well uh, for the via headers. The other one was for the contact headers. So again, remove this and then hard code your uh, hostname. Okay, so ideally you'd make this a new uh, configurable option, um, but I don't know how to do that. I, I know how to do this and uh, this has worked for me, so I'm going to stick with it. Um, but if you do make such a modification, uh, consider uh, giving it back to the Asterisk developers. It is a open source project after all.
Okay, so we can now uh, check our build environment with uh, point slash configure to make sure that uh, our uh, build environment is correct. And once we see the asterisk logo and ASCII out on our screen, uh, we know that our build environment is correct and that we can uh, proceed to compiling asterisk. Um, so um, to actually modify the install we're going to do, uh, we can type make menu select. And this will give us the option to uh, make a few changes to the install. Alright, and I'm going to make a few changes. Mainly uh, I'm going to add the Silk codec. This is the codec that um, Teams uses. Um, however, uh, you probably won't be able to make much use of this because your upstream provider won't actually support Silk. Uh, still, for experimentation purposes, uh, it might be useful to enable this. Um, if you don't use it, it won't, won't be in the way. And then I'll come down here to the sound packages. And get the sound packages in SLN16 format. SLN16, signed linear 16, is uh, a format that Asterisk uh, likes to compile from and to. Or rather, transcode from and to. Uh, so I'm also going to get the... Uh, music on hold packages here in the same format and the extra sounds as well and then save and exit and these sounds will be downloaded from the internet once we install um, but then I'm, I'm now going to compile asterisk I'm going to use four threads and watch it go and uh, this should take a couple of minutes and then I'll be back Okay, asterisk is now done compiling and we can go ahead and install asterisk. So type make install like it says we should. And this is the step where it's going to download all the, all the sound files and um, put everything in the right place. Okay, so it's now done compiling and installing and we can go ahead and uh, actually use it but before we do that we need to type um, ld config make config and lastly make basic pbx and it will give us some sample files uh, and then we can go ahead and go to etc asterisk And uh, we see a couple of configuration files there and we need to edit two of these, mainly extensions.conf and pjzip.conf. I'm going to now put in my pre-configured pjzip.conf and extensions.conf files and work you through all the options I set. All right, so I just uh, copied my files over and here they are. Uh, so uh, let's start with the transports. If you already know a little bit about asterisk, then you know what this is. Uh, but in case you don't, a transport is basically the uh, ports that you open and the way uh, you want to uh, receive and transmit uh, SIP packages. For example, you can do that over UDP, uh, TCP or TLS. And I've actually defined two of them here. Uh, one is over UDP. Uh, and, it, and it binds on uh, all the IP addresses available uh, so it will be publicly accessible. Make sure your firewall is um, because you're going to get uh, attacks from, from outsiders uh, pretty quickly after you install Asterisk. Um, so make sure before you run it that there is a firewall in place. Uh, then I have a TLS for transport because this is necessary for teams to work. Um, and this, uh, I open up TLS on a different port, 5061 instead of the standard 5060. Uh, and then I supply some paths to uh, certificate files. Uh, this is what we're going to do next after we're done <laughs> walking through the configuration files. I mean, um, then um, I select the cipher suite. Uh, and this should be, I'm not a, a cryptographer, but this should be uh, pretty secure. And then uh, I supply the local nets because it's good for asterisk to know what networks are local. 
uh, then uh, I'm going to supply an endpoint template. This is just for later use. You can ignore this for now or leave it out uh, or whatever. Uh, then uh, I supply two uh, endpoints. Um, both are going to use the transport uh, TLS uh, option. Uh, I'm going to put them in the context teams. This will come in handy in the extensions.com file. Um, then I'll allow a subset of codecs. Um, we're probably mainly going to use uh, G722 and ALAW because that's what most VoIP operators and what Teams allows. Um, and um, if the codec codecs that are supported by your ITSP and Teams are not the same, um, but Asterisk knows a way to transcode between the two, it actually will. And that will uh, cost you some uh, CPU time. And if you have a lot of calls running through your asterisk machine, then uh, it will be really busy transcoding. So it's a good idea to make sure these codecs match. Uh, then again, there's a, uh, another transport, and I mean another endpoint for uh, Teams in. And this will make sure that the uh, zip packets from Teams will be recognized as uh, trusted. And that will happen with this line here. So, and this address is from the Microsoft documentation and will always lead to the IP addresses that Microsoft is using for their SIP packages. All right, so uh, a bit more further down here, we have the, uh, uh, the configuration for SpeakUp. SpeakUp is a Dutch ITSP, um, and that's what I'm using today. Uh, I'm using IP authentication with them, so that means that they know the IP address of this SBC, um, and I will receive calls directly from them on the supplied IP address and when I send uh, invite packages to them they also recognize my IP address and will let the go call go through. Um, so that's that. It's uh, oh, un under 100 lines so uh, not really uh, interesting or special. Uh, then the extensions.conf is much shorter. It's only 23 lines. Um, and here, uh, let's start here with Teams. This will be for calls from Teams. And when a call comes from Teams, you probably want to, it to go to the outside world. Um, so here, uh, the call will be routed to the outside world to speak up. And if that doesn't work, then just hang up. Teams like to get back 200k packages from their SIP options. So this is a line to make sure that happens. Otherwise, you're gonna see a warning in your uh, teams admin center and here is a few lines to allow attended transport uh, transfers however um, these are broken right now um, if you try an attended transfer then you get a new call and it's, it's weird uh, and i haven't had time to figure that out yet so again this is not for production purposes uh, and then inbound is uh, what we do with calls from speakup as you can see incoming call from pstn routing to teams it's going to set the caller ID header and then call Teams. Um, and and that, that's it really, it's not uh, not that special. Uh, and if if something weird happens, then we play back something wrong and we hang up. Okay, so that's it. Next up is generating the certificates for use with the TLS transport. And for this, we are going to use acme.sh. Acme.sh is a, uh, well, Acme client, and this will help us uh, generate the certificate from Let's Encrypt. So I just installed uh, Acme.sh. The, all the instructions are uh, on the GitHub page of Acme.sh, and they actually registered the domain name Acme.sh. So you can type that into your browser and land on the correct GitHub page. Uh, it's really well done. Um, so uh, now let's generate the certificates. But before we do that, we have to make sure that the uh, folder where we should uh, put the keys uh, exists. And we need to actually make sure that we uh, log out and log back in uh, for our environments to uh, recognize the new acme.sh command. So after we do that, we can paste our command here. And this will um, generate a new certificate and put it in the correct folders. And to do the validation, it's going to spin up a temporary web server um, on port 80. So it actually 
uh, did that before I could finish talking. So it went really quick. And we can now uh, s uh, start asterisk again. So systemctl start asterisk. And then let's go back to the console. And as you can see, um, the contact uh, teams is now reachable. There's a round time of uh, 670 milliseconds. Uh, that should become uh, shorter in a bit. Um, but it shows us that uh, our TLS transport is working. So what we can now do is go to the Teams Admin Center and add our uh, SPC. Uh, but just in case you uh, don't have a tenant yet, I'm going to walk you through that as well. So this is the page where you can request a uh, Office 365 developer account. So I'm going to quickly fill this in with my information. I'm going to select an arbitrary uh, company name and then the language preferences English. That's fine. I have of course read the terms and conditions. So I'm going to select that and click next. I'm going to select personal projects and then Microsoft Teams. And then uh, we get a, the option to uh, preview our sandbox with uh, arbitrary information. Um, I'm going to select configurable sandbox for now. And then let's create a domain name and a user. So the user will be Nick, because that's me. Uh, let's see, Teams demo, is that still available? Of course not. Nope, okay. So I'm going to type in um, Teams, uh, X5V demo. That can be taken. There we go. So I'm going to create a new password. And then hit continue. And wants us to verify our phone number. That's fair. So I'm going to type in my phone number and get the code. All right, so my phone number has now been verified and now it's setting up my subscription. And this should only take a minute. And there we go, we now have a fresh new Office 365 E5 tenant. So that's nice. Let's click on go to subscription and log in. And there we go. Let's go to the admin center. And then I'm going to click on show all settings domains. As you can see, there's no domains set up. Uh, what we need to do here is add the host name of our SBC. So I'm going to click on add domain. And then uh, copy the domain name again. Paste it in here. Use this domain. I'm going to load. And I'm going to add a TXT record to verify ownership of this domain. And this is really easy. All we need to do is make sure there's a txt record that has the same name as our other uh, domain name. So come back here and then type in uh, teams, that's SPC, that's the name. And I'm going to actually click on txt, there we go, teams SPC. And then the contents and then click create records. That has now been created. So now let's click on verify to see if everything went well. Okay, so now asks us how we want to connect our domain and I'm going to add my own DNS records because we don't actually uh, need to uh, add anything because we're not going to use any Microsoft services. So uh, uncheck the exchange uh, checkbox and then click on next. And then it says domain setup is complete. Great. Next step is to create a new user that uses the new domain name here. So let's go ahead and go to uh, active users and then add a user. And I'm going to call this uh, user the activation user. There we go. Activation. And make sure that the domain is set to, uh, to here. And uh, let's type in a password here. And uh, assign uh, all the licenses because, well, it's a developer uh, tenant, so uh, it's free. Yay. Okay, so the user has now been created, and we need to actually sign in once as this user. 
to go ahead and copy the, the username here. And I'm going to open up a in private window and then go to portal.office.com. Paste the username, type in the password. And uh, after this, we're going to delete this user, but we need to sign in once to activate the domain name. So we now got signed in as the new user, as the activation user here. So we can go ahead and close this window. And uh, we're ready to add the SBC to our Teams admin center here. So let's log into that. Once we get into the Teams Admin Center, we can go ahead and go to Voice and then Direct Routing. It's going to load some data and then click Add and then we can uh, paste again the host name of our SVC. So here we go. I'm going to enable this and uh, as you can remember in the pjzip.conf we set the SIP signaling port to 5061. So that's what I'm going to set here. And I'm going to enable the P asserted identity header. And this is going to help with anonymous calling. So uh, go ahead and configure that and click save. And if everything goes well, you see a green box item was created and we can see the SBC here. A few moments later. As you can see, the SBC has now been added to the Teams admin center and the TLS connectivity state and the SIP option state are both active. Uh, so next what we need to do is create a PSTN usage record oh, and we can do that right here in the top right uh, Just go ahead and click add and call it um, Well, I don't know. Let's call it uh, OX5E just for the fun of it Then click apply and we're done with that And next up we need to create a, a voice route so go to voice routes here and actually we have uh, already have a local route but we're going to create a new one um, to make uh, to make it simple uh, give that a priority of one and then uh, in the uh, dialed number pattern fields type in backslash d plus and this is a, uh, a wildcard uh, let's actually give it a name and add our new SPC apply and add the PSTN usage records. Apply, save. And next up, we need to check out the voice routing policies. And we have a global uh, policy. And uh, this is, uh, you can create a different policy, but for demo purposes, uh, this is fine. However, we do need to add our PSTN usage record onto here. And if you haven't created a new policy, you uh, can actually proceed to the next step. If you did, then you need to assign that policy to the user you want uh, to have a dial pad in Teams. So next up, let's go to a Windows machine because we actually need a Windows machine for this next step. And uh, well, Windows wouldn't be Windows if there weren't updates to be installed. So um, let's wait for a bit and uh, I'll come back when the updates are installed. Okay, so we now have a Windows client and we can go ahead and install uh, all the necessary things and connect to our um, Microsoft tenant and Teams, you're getting in the way. We'll come back to you later. Uh, so uh, let's type set execution policy. Ah, great. Tab expansion is great. Okay, and let's set that to unrestricted because, well, it's a VM, we don't care. And then install module Microsoft Teams. And let's confirm that. And we'll confirm again by saying yes. And then we can import the module to our environment. Import module name is Microsoft Teams. Oops, there we go. And then we are ready to connect. So type connect 
Microsoft Teams. Uh, and, and we then see a, a login window. So let's uh, type in our username here. And then our passwords. And then we can see we are connected uh, once we get back the tenant uh, ID uh, and our own account ID. So that's great. Next up, we have to give our user a phone number. And uh, the phone number you already saw in the extensions.conf file in our asterisk configuration. Um, so uh, paste this command and then edit it to enter your uh, user's uh, username and the phone number that it should get. So I'm going to copy my own username here and then the phone number I'm going to type in. Okay, and then hit enter. And if we don't get back any errors, then uh, we should be ready uh, to place a phone call. So uh, let's try and start up Teams and log in with the user we just gave a phone number and see if we have a dial pad. So let's hit. Hallo, je bent verbonden met de speak-up testlijn. Maak een keuze uit één van de volgende mogelijkheden. Kies één voor een echo test. And there we go. We successfully connected to the Teams SBC. Let's now also try to make a call uh, to uh, Teams. And there we go. Wow. Okay. There we go. We can successfully make and receive calls with Microsoft Teams using Asterisk as an SBC. If you try this out for yourself, please let me know. If you get stuck, leave a comment and I or someone else may be able to help you further. Please like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching if you have been. Goodbye.